we are building a 1960s inspired vintage supercar using a $500 Porsche Boxster that we saved from the junkyard. Last week, we got the center radiator custom mounted in the front of the car. And now this week, we're going to fabricate the aluminum ductwork to get the hot air out the back side of the radiator and out the top of the front clamshell. This is one of the last things that we need to do so that we can begin skinning the exterior of this car in custom metal shaped aluminum. You're watching Project Jigsaw. Now there's junk in that hole. Good, good job. Thing, good thing we taped off these holes so we didn't get anything inside there. Gonna <laughs> cut off this neck too while we're at it. Uh, no, let's leave it on. You wanna leave it on? Yeah, let's leave it on. We'll see. I think it'll be okay. Bum, bum, bum. I'm gonna vacuum this out as best I can. This thing's a mess. His bag's taped up. The hose is broken. That's old. Who's in charge of this? Yeah. Hey, that doesn't mean it's not useful. <laughs> I didn't say that. Just I'm reminding you that it still is useful even though it's old. Even though it's Like old. some things around here. <laughs> Your cardboard's back, Ryan. I hate it. So if we leave the core exposed, Luke Skywalker is going to come through and bomb it. Yep. Do I have too much hump in there? Do we want to soften that? I'm not going to touch that. We do have to decide now, though, whether or not we want to relocate the reservoir that it's going to help define where we can go and what the shape is going to be. Changes the entirety of the radius in the backside. I think we don't move it. We already have a chassis yep. that's already built. It already functions. We didn't build a tube chassis from scratch like other race builders would do. And we're not building a race car race car. Right. So I vote we don't move it. I'm good with that. I, I think we can uh, work around it. So our current idea is to take wire and make another wireframe, which is a lot of fun. We love doing wireframes on this channel. We're gonna wireframe the ductwork that goes behind the radiator for the air to exhaust out through the clamshell. So then we can use that as our guide for some poster board to then take that poster board and turn it into aluminum. I think about like that, what do you think? Somewhere around there? Yeah, I think that was good. I don't take my hat off. So comfortable in my hat though. It's pretty warm in here. Yeah, well I'm comfortable. Using the grid on the floor to make your 90 degrees. Yeah, you like that? Just, uh, I guess I'll just lay that on there. It'll be fine. <laughs> Thanks. The filler rod on the top that runs across the top here, it was too short to reach for here. So we gotta put a little like uh, interface piece and I was gonna say, I might be able to weld this and tack it in time, but cause it's so thick, it's gonna get super hot. I should probably use pliers. Or, you know, wear real gloves for this, but. Or get a longer I'm piece and just tack that or. Any option but the one is currently in your hand. It's not currently in my hand.
He's got his thinking face on again. That means he wants to change something. So I was thinking... We I knew were, it. I knew it. Yeah, <laughs> you could see it. Uh, we had decided we were going to go this way. Um, and I really think we're just better off if we go this way. When I look at all the examples of other cars that are doing similar things, it doesn't have to be that flowy to work. And so going this way is going to make our work easier and give us more space for whatever we need it for up front. I do actually agree with that. My first initial thought with that was, oh, it's not gonna be efficient enough. But what I know about air is that it needs to go somewhere. So if it goes to the front radiator, it's gonna have to go out the back. Not only that, I think the air that goes across the top here will, should in theory at least, pull the air out as well with like a Venturi effect. So I think it'd be better to do that than an asymmetrical mess. As much as I love asymmetry nope. in vehicles, this it, is not the time. It's only good when it makes sense. We'll have room back there for something. Right, there we go. We have like an emergency toolkit. We talked about maybe wanting to have a spare tire. When are we actually gonna need a spare tire? I can't remember, all 18 years ago. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that could happen that we would not be able to get away with just tire goo and a tire inflator. And again, Other we're doing burnout. We're, yeah, so if you do burnout, obviously it's one thing. Oh but wait, we like, might need it then. <laughs> but driving wise though, I have not shredded a tire unintentionally. This clip will also come up someday when we when we need there's, it. Yeah. There's two clips so far that will come back up in the future. One, when I said last video, just don't wreck the car. And now... And then we're, we're going to probably wreck the car someday, and that, that video's going to back up. And now I said we don't need a spare tire, so... I'm not superstitious, but I am a little bit stitious. So we need to move this line from here to here. All right, that's easy enough. Yep. All that extension I just did for that... Was for nothing. Was, yeah, yes. for nothing. Correct. For not. Waiting on you. I'm doing work. What are you doing? You're throwing clowns. That's also work. Uh-oh. What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, I'm gonna weld this one lefty. You know what you're doing? Yeah. And, ah! Uh, all that work for this. It looks like a skate That's a lot of work for that. So here's what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do now, what we have this data, is we're gonna take poster board, we're gonna lay out the flat sides of our duct, cut that out of aluminum, and then we'll have a duct. And then we'll have to make flanges and stuff quack, and quack. figure out how to, no. And then after we get it cut out of aluminum and assembled, we'll have to figure out flanging and how we're gonna mount it to the uh, radiator and body, but that's a problem for later in this video, not right now. There it goes. <laughs> there it goes. Woo! A little spicy one. Oh, there it is. It's beautiful. It kind of is. Look at all those sheets. $800 of aluminum right there. We just blew our $500 budget, Tony. We did. Oh, no. Oh, wait, we never had a $500 budget. No. We got the car for $500. Yeah. So we got our templates now um, and our fresh aluminum to finally begin skinning and also working in other parts of this car that is more than just tubing and wire. Tony made these templates and they're really basic. We have, we're gonna make two of these. That's the side walls of the vent. And then we have one for the rear. This is just gonna be flipped. It's boop, boop. Together, it'll be one. We wanna have frames. Did you say OB1? Together, OB1. There can sure. be only one? No, no, no Highlander. This is the footprint for the vent itself. However, we also wanna have flanges. The flanges will need to be on the edge of the vent and also between the radiator and this vent because then we can put foam there to keep air from bleeding out. Rather than cutting strips and like putting one on a 90 degree angle and welding them, instead, my idea here is we're gonna trace this, then we're gonna add the flanges that we needed and then we'll go into the brake and break it over or use the bead roller if it's a curve like this one for up here. If you've ever cut sheet metal aluminum, you know it's kind of a pain. I think the Sawzall would be best here. We'll see I if we Typically we need there. a shear, but this is a little too thick for a shear, so. 
So this is what's called a throatless shear. Throatless because you can kind of squiggle any which way and it's fine. There are multiple styles of shears. This is my favorite style. Now the downside to this kind of shear is that anything on this side is considered waste because it's not kept crisp and it kind of squiggles off. This will go a lot faster because that solves all. Whereas it worked, that was kind of a chore. And it took two of us. It took two of us, which is not really optimal. So these are like the side pieces for the vents. I've already flanged the one end with the brake because it's the easy end to flange, which mates up to the radiator. So it'll kind of sit like, if the cardboard's the radiator, it'll sit like that. So now what I need to do, this is the top where the hood is, or top of clamshells rather. So I need to flange this over, but because this is curved and not a straight line, I'm gonna have to use the bead roller, which means we're also gonna have to shrink stretch this edge to get it to cooperate. I'm gonna use this one so I can use this one. But it's fine. So when I'm flanging on the bead roller, I like to use a flat die and then a sharper die like this one to tip over on the underside because I typically bend downwards when I flange. It'll allow it to go around uh, extra bends. So if I wanted to bend more than 90, for example, there's more room back here to do that. The downside to doing this is the upper die is wide, right? So I don't know exactly where this lower die is unless I kind of follow a uh, procedure I do every time. So what I like to do is when I align this ever so slightly in from the edge of this face. So I know where that's going to be every single time. And then I'll lock it down here. Cause when I have the panel on top here, I'm not gonna be able to see that lower die. Don't drop that on your toe, Wiley Coyote. Yeah. I'm like, do you want this anvil over here? As I was just complaining, I need to go to the chiropractor today. <laughs> hey, you offered. I wasn't gonna say I, no. Yeah, correct. I didn't want to carry it across the room. I always have to carry it across the room. I knew that you were not going to carry it across the room. <laughs> yeah, we have the, the bead roller, like lag bolt is on the floor. But for whatever reason, there's only one bolt and it's not fully tight. Yeah, I'm not sure what the reason was, but I know I wasn't involved. The reason is because the drill bit that is necessary for that bolt died and we never got a new bit. So I have no excuse other than we just didn't do it. Typically this die is wide enough for my flange, but I'm doing a bigger flange. And as you can see, it's kind of like gouging in right here, which I don't like. I'm gonna swap it out for this big boy. Look at that bacon. This looks like a job for Roger. So now that I have my edge broken here, I should be able to just use the dolly, hold it down nice and tight, and just kind of fold it over further. It's important that I use an anvil here to hold this flat while I hammered, because if I didn't do that, when I flip this over afterwards, this still wouldn't be nice and crispy. It would be really rounded. Before you do any metal shaping and you wanna take a step further in the project you're working on, you need to learn how to read the panel. And by looking at this panel, I know that I want it not to do this, but instead to be perfectly straight. So in using that logic, I would know that this side right here has too much material because it's bent at a 90 and it's causing it to curve this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the kick shrinker. I'm gonna shrink the spots that are especially curved. And I'm just gonna work at them slowly and try to just massage this back straight. And it should work pretty well. Plus again, it's also part of the radiator shroud. So it doesn't need to be perfect, it's just functional. Since this is aluminum, I need to be really careful because it moves like 10 times faster than steel would, which is great for if you have a lot of stretch or shrink you need to do. However, if you need a little bit like this, it can go awry very fast. Very gently wash it for this. I need to hammer that in a little bit, see how it flares out. I think that's pretty good. That's one done. Tony, you wanna to do the other one? I probably should. We should see if how Tony's uh, bead rolling skills measure up.
So Tony, now that you spent a lot of time making that perfectly straight, I yep. realized something. Our wireframe, the curve with the shape of the body, is not perfectly straight. So we actually need to have it match that curve. Okay. So right now, my piece as well, if I match it up to the wireframe, there's a nice gap in the middle because it should be curved. Okay, I can do this again. All right, you wanna play the, the game where I do this once and we see if it matches it perfectly or not? We can do that. That noise is horrific. I think that'll do. Oh look, you know, he says perfectly and then he's just like, oh, that'll do. It's either perfectly or it's I mean, not. The problem is, is like it's flexes, yeah, so I don't know right, exactly yeah. what's perfect. What we really need to do is check on the car with the tubing. I don't know exactly where it goes on here because we don't have the, <laughs> it marked. We don't marked. have it marked right. Uh, and also this angle matters. It changes the radius of that. That's it's close. approximately there, so I think it's close enough. You have a mic on, you can't be slurping your coffee back there, Tony. <laughs> the big benefit to doing a wireframe, or one of the additional benefits anyway, is that I can tape the pieces as we make them to the wireframe to jig them up in place so then when we tack them, they'll be in the right orientation in the floating space of time and everything else. So the side panels are made, they're roughed in, ready to go. So now we're gonna make the back panel that goes to the back of the vent here. Then we can tape that up and keep rolling. Which one of these did I do? Is that a question for the viewers or is that a legitimate question? I really don't know. Because <laughs> I actually don't know which one you did as well. <laughs> which, to that point, says something because metal shaping is not your forte, right? Correct. I am primarily more mechanical, but I want to use this project to change that and really learn metal shaping. I mean, you did send me to a bunch of metal shaping classes. Right. So it'd be wrong of me to not then impart that knowledge upon you. Back to me, yes. So this back panel is supposed to have a curve that like fades in tighter at the back edge. The problem with that is it's very tough to make in the shop because we don't have a slip roll or a radius break. However, I have an idea. That's what I'm afraid of is that it's... It, I, Sharp anyway, yeah. there. So that, yeah. that's, that's a good. lot better, actually. Yeah, that's pretty good. We're like the... All right, we got a couple tacks on this thing now. The bottom squared out to the radiator. Before we uh, weld weld things, you probably should check it. That's always a good idea. So, a loose, rough look at it if it's pretty well. Yeah, but it's definitely symmetrical. The one thing that kind of stands out a little bit is the bottom down here. You have a little bit of a gap. However, we have to figure out how it's gonna interface down there anyway, so the gap can be filled with whatever we interface with. We could have something that comes off the bottom of the radiator mounts to interface with that, that flange on the bottom. Yeah, I think that's probably where we'll go. And we are tight here, because I mean, right now obviously it's sitting on this because there's nothing holding it in place. So yep. that might be a little close, but also, we're, again, we need to imagine here that there's foam on top of these flanges, like thick foam. It's gonna go against the bottom of the clamshell. So I think we'll be okay. Okay, we've got it made up. It looks good, but now we need a way to attach it. We can just let it sit there. And no. It's, where's it gonna go? Is it gonna fly well, out of the clamshell? Well, if we continue to not drive it, it won't go anywhere. But <laughs> if we wanna drive it, I think we need to attach it. So I like your idea. Let's make a U-shaped flat piece here that it can attach to, that will attach to the brackets that we already have. We can interface them. Yep. Also worth noting, because we saw a lot of comments in the last video. This already is isolated, don't worry. The radiator's not gonna crack, guys. We have foam from the kit in there. We'll probably beef that up, but yeah. Oh, no, yeah, it, 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 it's, uh, uh, like many things, <laughs> it's temporary oh, for mock-up. Yeah, but it is not metal to metal. No, I won't do that. You should've hit him. This, this actually might destroy him. <laughs> This looks like something that John McClane would climb through. Shoot the glass. Well, that's funny. Yeah. I've never watched Die Hard. No. I'm not even kidding, too. It's the best Christmas movie ever. <laughs> You've never seen Die Hard? I haven't. All right, we're gonna take a break. <laughs> we're gonna go watch a movie and we'll be right back. 
See, I told you. you right you there. Crawl right through that. Yeah. And this is wider than the piece I want to use. We seem to be very short on the material I want to use. This is what we will use. <laughs> Maybe we're better off with this. That came out nice. I like welding heavy stuff because it's very forgiving and like unlike the really thin stuff you often weld here. I think you should weld the other side, Tony. Stuff's very forgiving. Yeah, I think you're right. I need more practice with the TIG. You're gonna strike your arc and start your puddle. Once you have your puddle started, you're gonna take your filler rod, you're gonna dab it in quick and pull it back. And then you're gonna move forward just a little bit, pause for like half a second, dab your filler rod in, move forward, Dab your filler rod in, move forward, dab your filler rod in, move forward, and try to keep that as consistent as possible. We'll see if it works out. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, Tony. Not bad. We got this, but we need a way to attach to this, so we need to run a little arm in from each side to here. How about a little piece to go straight across? That little one inch piece you Yeah, have. that's kind of what inch I was thinking. Half. It'll be stronger than two little arms sticking out. Yep, there I did it. He did it! That's pretty good. You're getting there. Mm, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, there we go. So we got our mounting flange for our duct. Now we just need to mount the mounting flange. Mm. But who watches the watchman? There is a good bit of space between the radiator bracket and that you can see the width difference. So we can't just hook it in here. It needs to go down here. Yeah, exactly. So it's rather than make a whole clamping mechanism instead, we'll just make a little bracket that overhangs, nutsert that, bolt that there. It's welded here. And bolted here. So that it'll be tighter that way and less fabrication. It's your turn to figure this thing out now. All right, I've never used it. Uh, zero to eight millimeters. He was making fun of me last video. Um, I would still be making fun of you because you didn't do this. Any day now, Tony. Mm hmm. You know what? I have a feeling that I will still be ahead of you going back and forth. It depends on how I edit this. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> And we gotta tack these up here. Then we have a frame to uh, bolt mount all of our to. stuff to. Shrouds and fans and oh my. Yeah, this is a multi purpose sandwich plate. Ooh, I'm hungry. Looking like something. I blew out my first tack and it's so ugly. That gets so nice afterwards. You'll have that.
That looks good. That looks very good. It definitely took a little longer to get here than I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do this because we need to know where the air is coming out of the skin. There's a lot more to this than just putting an a radiator in here and putting a hole for it to get in and a hole for it to get out. You can literally have the air only coming through, flowing through part of the radiator. So literally only half your radiator is working. Which will cause overheating issues. Oh yeah. So I mean, lots of these projects, you, oh, it's overheating and it's because the engine's in the back and the radiator in the front. It's not. It's, it's all about making this work the way it's supposed to. And there's a reason that paid engineers do that on a regular basis. We're going to lean into all the things that they've learned and do our best and we might have to make adjustments down the road, but we want to start from a good foundation um, and not have to move the hole in the hood all the way up here or something like that, which we won't have to do because we did it right now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Based on all the things that we've learned so far, I think our opening is going to be about this size. So from here to here and mm, there to there. Straight across, yeah. Yep. Like a mirror would be, but a little bit further back. So we can use the underside of the clamshell as part of the air duct at the top. You gotta jet it out. So what you want is an opening that is smaller than the surface area of the radiator for, for both the inlet and the outlet. That will allow the air to slow down as it passes through the radiator, which will help with drag and also give it a lot more time to get the heat out of the radiator and cool this thing down. And that's how we ended up with this size. And we definitely want that. We want to know what that is before we start the skin. So we know we're not gonna be coming back here and redoing all this again later. We've seen you guys in the comments asking about updates for the Porsche 928 Y-Body project and also the 911 Y-Body backdate project. So here's a little bit of an update. Project Jigsaw is a project that we are doing for us. It's a shop project that we have full creative reign over. We have basically full control over the timeline. It is great for a video series. Now the 928 and the 911 projects are customer projects, which means basically if you've worked in the automotive industry, you're kind of aware that progress on a customer project is not exactly linear and a non-linear progress is not great for a video series. And to do justice to both customers and ourselves, we decided to not do weekly updates on this project so that we can be more efficient and keep moving forward on them. That being said, these projects are not completely gone. However, we will have updates in the future when we feel like we have enough content that is worth your time. Because we value your guys' time and also the support that you have on our projects, but please know that we have not forgotten you and we will get back to those projects. Now, the white 911 wide body backdate project, from the start, we only were doing a partial job too. We were just doing the steel work to it and getting that stuff done so that the customer can take the car back and do the body work themselves and paint and yada, yada, yada. So we will have an update that shows the final product of what we've done soon. We're actually pretty close to finishing that project. And then the 928, we will continue again in the relatively near future. This video has been paid for and sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform designed for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to make a beautiful website, engage with your audience, sell products, and more. All in one place in your own terms. Check out the link in the description down below to save 10% off your first website or domain through Squarespace. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and we'll see you guys next week.